Have you ever found yourself trading a stock that seems to be touching every price but not really going anywhere? Hi, I'm Jeff Holden, head of recruiting here at SMB Capital. Today we do a playbook with a new trader who shows us how he trades a stock that fits his playbook and he has a directional bias on but touches a lot of prices. Some stocks do and it can be a threat but in this video we discuss how that becomes a tremendous opportunity for this trader and how important reading the tape can be in this situation to ensure you can profit from this opportunity. So my name is Cameron. I am a junior intern here at SMB. Today I'm going to be presenting a playbook on a trade I took. This was an opening drive day one news catalyst trade that I took on COIN on June 13th, 2022. So here's the market bigger picture. We all know that inflation is at a record high and the Fed is under pressure to reduce inflation um, with uh, interest rates. And the, the record high inflation is causing volatility in the markets. Chinese COVID lockdown is causing pressure on Chinese names and the markets. And, um, and we know that the Russia-Ukraine war still continues with no end in sight. Oil and natural gas prices are still quite high. And the January 6th committee uh, hearings are taking place currently. So these are a few of the um, uh, more general market themes that are going on that are affecting the markets and how uh, stocks trade these days. So here's a bigger picture on SPY. We broke down um, a key support at 390 to 380. SPY is down 22% from its high in January, um, which marks that it officially entered bear territory. The markets are bracing for possibility of larger uh, Fed rate hike in hopes to curb inflation. So um, we do see a strong downtrend on SPY, lower highs and lower lows. And we put in this range here and we consolidated above the range and then we broke out of the range quite strongly on increasing volume. So this was a very bearish, um, a very bearish technical setup for SPY in the markets and it affected a lot of stocks that traded. So here's a look at the VIX on the day um, uh, that I took the trade on coin. So we see that the VIX has a resistance here at 35 and on the day of the trade, VIX spiked all the way to 35 and um, we did hold that high for a bit. So this shows that volatility was quite high because of the, uh, because of anticipation of the Fed's meeting on Wednesday, um, which was when Wednesday the 15th. The Fed was going to announce how much they were going to raise interest rates to help curb inflation and the markets were anticipating this event um, two days after I took this trade. If you want to learn three more real world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right hand corner of your screen. That will open up the free registration page in a new window. So don't worry, you won't lose this video. You can also visit tradingworkshop.com to register for this free intensive workshop. You're going to learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. Here's the bigger picture on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is why, down. Why, why Bitcoin for this name? Coin is um, Coinbase and they deal with cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin generally um, it is the largest name in the cryptocurrency um, space. So it is important to look at Bitcoin when analyzing any sort of cryptocurrency stock because it gives you the broader market view of how the sector is doing in general. Yep. So it's down 58.3% from its highs in November of 2021. Lower highs and lower lows, as you can see here. The global crypto market cap peaked at 2.9 trillion in November of 2021, which was this area right here. And over the past two months, the entire crypto market has lost one trillion dollars worth of value. Um, so that's what you see right here. And just recently, Bitcoin broke through a one month range. So we came down, you see here we consolidated 
large volume spikes throughout this consolidation. We consolidated for about a month and then we broke down on tremendous volume. So this was incredibly bearish for the entire crypto market and it paves the way for um, crypto stocks as well. Here we have Coin, which is the stock that I traded. So Coin is also down 85% from its high in November. Strong downtrend, like I've mentioned before. Broke down a one month range and then um, price opened right below a key support here at, at $48 on increased volume. So this is where I took the trade on Coin. Um, this is, that was the daily chart, this is the four hour chart. You see we put in this pretty consistent one month range. We did break out of it, but we immediately broke back down into it. We downtrended into 45, and then on the increase, on increased volume, we spiked up, which shows that 45 was a very strong support level for Coinbase. And then once we broke down through the range again, we touched 45, which shows that this volume um, was indeed very helpful to gauge the context and the strength of this support level. So here are the intraday fundamentals for, for coin. The reason why this piqued my interest, especially out of any other cryptocurrency stock, was because it gapped down overnight from $58 to $48, which is quite a large, um, which is quite large movement for this stock. And another factor that, that played into this trade was that tensions have been building up inside the Coinbase company. And the CEO said, in quotes, quit if you're not happy, which is a very negative thing to say to your employees. And um, it shows that the company was struggling um, just in general. And then, like I said before, the entire crypto market cap sank below $1 trillion overnight. Another factor was that Crypto.com and BlockFi, which are two other crypto companies, plan to lay off employees as market downturn intensifies. So this all helps with the context of the trade and it, it helped me put on the trade. Um, yep. So the, uh, here are some statistics. Average daily volume, 18 million. Our vol was 1.6. So we did a little bit higher um, than the daily volume, not too much, but um, it was still enough to grab my attention. The 14-day the ATR on this stock is 9.73 and the day's range was 9.3, which was about in line with its ATR. Um, the short float 18%, shares float 148 million, institutional ownership 39% and insider ownership 0.3%. So here's a trade strategy that I used for this trade, which was an opening drive trade. First, I like to look at the level two when the market opens initially and look for strong buying or selling. When I first came into the morning with my idea for coin, I didn't just have a long or short game plan. I had both just to cover all bases and make sure that I have um, exposure in the trade, even if I'm wrong with um, my initial bias. So the next part of my strategy is to locate key levels for entries and wait for a price to break those levels. I then like to watch the level two at these levels and look to see that the levels are defended. So if I'm getting, if I want to take a long trade, I want to see that price breaches the level. And then on the level two, I want to see the uh, bid step up and um, prevent price from breaching the level and then continue to make a downtrend uh, from that level. I also possibly look to add above levels um, and or VWAP if the price and volume follow through. So if the stock is in an uptrend, but the VWAP, if the stock is in an uptrend, but the volume um, decreases, that does indicate to me that eventually price will make a, um, make a reversal. So I wanna make sure that my entries and exits and how long I'm in the trade, that I want, I wanna make sure that that aligns with the broader trend that I see that the volume is making. Um, and when I'm, when I want to get out of this position, I watch the tape and scale out, optionally trading around a core. So that depends on the trade that I take and that depends on the context. If the trade still has some momentum, still has some, some juice left in it, I may trade around a core. But if it looks bad, then I may just get flat completely. So that's, the, that's my trading strategy for an opening drive. Let's definitely talk about this a little bit because I think, sure. I think going into the trade strategy, I think you're, you're 
you're headed in the right direction here, but this is something we run into a lot. Okay. A trade strategy is a finite set of rules, right? For okay. most people. Um, on the open, those rules wind up being a little more loosely based than <laughs> later in the day. Um, because you, a lot of times we're doing a lot of the things that you just mentioned. You know, we're watching the level two when the art, when the market opens and looking for strong buying or selling. You know, we're locating key levels. We're watching, you know, the price action at those levels. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're looking to add above, below, view up. Those are all strategies that we're using. But I think there's another layer that we're kind of not covering, which is what price patterns, essentially, are you okay. looking for? Otherwise, we're just being really responsive. Um, you know, I think, I think your strategy here is good in that it provides a lot of flexibility. And if you're taking scalps, if you're just coming in and saying, I'm going to scalp this, uh, this is what you do when you scalp. You're right. just looking at the level two, you're looking at the price action, all that. If you're looking for kind of a trend trade, mm-hmm. um, you need to see kind of some, some, a couple dynamics at play there. Um, you're going to want to see some price patterns that, that really support what you're trying to do. You're going to want to kind of, you know, ideally use the tape in the way that you're discussing, but have some idea of where the, or have some some vision for where that price action could, what that price action that you're seeing could take the stock, um, how it could take the stock up or down. Um, right. You know, you're gonna wanna, wanna have a little more depth in your trade strategy here. I think, I guess I should just ask the question though, are you just scalping or is it something where you're looking for the potential of a trend or, or, or something else to develop? This trade did end up being a scalping trade, but in the future, I would like to develop this setup a lot more and refine my entries and exits, which I'll get to later on in the presentation. Cool. Yeah. All right. So, so then, you know, I can evaluate this or we can talk about this as, as a scalp trade. And so mm-hmm. in that case, you're doing really well. <laughs> um, you know, when it is a scalp trade, like, and I think more traders should start out by scalping mm-hmm. um, because I think that by learning to trade as a scalper you're learning to control your risk you're taking typically more trades than than you know someone who's more of a position trader um you're forcing yourself to read the tape much faster and much better than somebody who's a position trader um and more often than not you're just forced to make more trade decisions right um as a scalper and so in this case you do want to like this is the best trade strategy you can have for a scalp So um, you just need to make sure you're coming in with zero bias on it. You know, I like scalping this trade because it kind of gave me a lot of reps. I was able to keep my mind active and it was kind of like a like a fun. um, It was kind of like playing a sport. So you're constantly active in the trade. You're not just sitting there placing your stop and then going out for lunch or something. You're constantly monitoring and it. It, it's a different style of trading that I do like in some uh, some circumstances, yeah. In some circumstances, and when you understand what those circumstances are, and when you can adjust your your thought process to be in that scalping mindset, mm-hmm. exactly like you said, it's actually kind of fun. Yeah. That, right? Yeah. It, it's very different than if you're, you know, thinking of how to position trade and, you know, eventually, you know, you want to you have a playbook that includes both, but... Yeah, when when you're just getting into it, if you pick a really good stock, so yeah. that's the that's the biggest thing is stock selection for it. Right. If you're going to be a scalper, right, you have to have good stock selection. Of course, yeah, um, 100. It can be so much fun because you if you have liquidity and if you have range and if you have you know kind of uh, a catalyst that's going to support price action, all those things can just be so much fun to trade with. So here is the technical analysis on the five minute chart for Coinbase. As you see here, we gap down quite hard, and then we put it, put in this range here on the in the pre market. We trended down to forty five, which was that key level that was defended initially um, when Coin in, um, first uh, broke down. And then we uh, made a strong move higher, put in this bit of a range, which kind of followed the pre market range, and um, we created this rising wedge and price touched and held above view up, which is a very bullish bullish sign, which I want to see for this trade. Um, and then it held you up again later on. So one thing I want to point out here was that when price came down to this 45 level, we had an e- extreme increase in volume, um, which meant that this level was strongly defended. And um, 
once we put in this green bar, it was a very bullish sign for, um, for the rest of the stock. And um, this led me to have a, um, to prepare my long mindset here. And that's when I initially started to uh, enter the trade, which, which was right about here. And I'll get into that later. So here is the 15 minute chart, which is a little bit cleaner to see. Um, like I said here, we put in these wicks, which uh, indicated consolidation from the pre-market. And then we had this clear uptrend and we broke it. So another thing I want to point out uh, regarding the volume is that we have a clear, a clear de decrease in volume, a trend in decrease in volume here prior to this break in the uptrend, um, which meant that buying was slowing down and then it uh, indicated that eventually the trend could reverse. So that is something I looked at um, that helped me um, gauge my exits out of the trade. So let's talk about that then too. So if you had increasing volume on that up, right. what would you be thinking? If we had increasing volume on the up move, I would have held my positions for a little bit longer because that indicates that the um, trend is very strong and buyers are continuing to buy. Um, but in this case, buyers were slowing down and sellers stepped in eventually, which led and, me to... Uh, and this is, this is actually pretty normal to see the buying slowing down as the day progresses. Right. You know, it's more abnormal to see the buying increase or the volume increase as the day progresses. Right. That's like a very abnormal thing to see that actually. Mm -hmm. So, you know, understanding the context and using tools like this to, to kind of help you formulate a strategy can be a really important thing because it allows you to, to have the right trade idea for mm -hmm. the right situation. So here is the tape video that I recorded from the trade. So here we have a large seller on the offer. So this is right after the open too. Right. This is exactly. This is right when we opened. Basically, um, there was a large seller on the offer right as price was reaching the forty-seven level. So then, um, as we continue, if I skip ahead a little bit. Well, we don't want to skip ahead too much because we just saw the forty-seven, right? Right. So I, I want to show you. Um, because I, what I like to do in reading the tape is, yeah, well, okay, yeah, I, maybe maybe you were at the right time and I jumped in. Let's see. Yeah. So um, price breached through forty-seven at this at this yep. point, and then um, we are approaching the VWAP, and right as we reject the VWAP at seven at timestamp seventeen uh, fifty-three. Um, we see a large seller on the bid side. So 101, uh, th this is a very large seller and I saw this and that caught my attention right as we rejected the view up. Um, so then we continue. So right here, as we're approaching, oh, oh 48, by the way, um, please um, disregard the stop here. Um, that was from a previous plan. Um, th just treat that as the 48 level. Yep. Okay. Yep. So here we have large sellers on the offer. So um, uh, as we're approaching um, 48 and the VWAP, and then when we were approaching uh, so we breached, but then we pulled back a little bit. So then now I can skip ahead to when we were approaching 50, which is the next key point. So buyers defended this level, buyers stepped in, and then I can skip to um, 2218. So as we were approaching, um, the 50 level. Um, we see massive sellers on the offer, and this is truly massive. Um, th that caught my attention qu um, quite, quite vividly, and uh, that led me to sell, take some size off. 
um, we reject a little bit, and then in approximately a minute, we see buyers defending the 50 level, so I'll show that. So here, um, right as we breached above 50, we see strong buyers on the, um, on the bid side. Mm -hmm. And that indicates that the trend is still strong and buyers want to push price higher um, as they're trying to defend each level. Um, yeah, particularly because the price action was, there was a strong seller there. Right. First time it went up there, broke through, and then there are buyers. Right. So we put in a higher tick here above 51. And then at 24.42, we bid above 51 again. Uh, and then we put in quite a large uh, stuff candle at this point. Um, so price does pull back. If you just, uh, in, in, a, in a few moments, price pulls back quite strongly. I do take some off here as I'm scalping. Um, so we pull all the way back. So at this moment, we see um, large size on the bid again, right as we were breaching above 50. Um, so we put in this large stuff candle, which shook a lot of people out of their trade. But these large buyers still indicate that they want to push price higher and that the bullish momentum is still intact. And then at 30, so a little bit later, so we see price breach through 51. And then at this point, we see buyers on the, on the bid side. And then um, we also see sellers on the, on the offer. So there is a bit of a fight here going on. And this is also where the pre-market consolidation is taking place, which makes sense. There are still sellers present from this area and um, they are fighting with the buyers a little bit. But uh, so at this point I was flat in the trade. Um, I just had to make sure that um, I re-enter um, if price breaches through with a strong tape confirmation. Um, so I was staying patient at this point in the trade. So then, so we um, look down a little bit, reached back through fifty one. So um, here, as we pull back, buyers are continuing to defend, trying to defend 50. So um, this may or may not be the same person. We, we don't know for sure, but this still shows me that buyers are defending levels from my, stra from my, uh, my strategy beforehand. So then um, we, we chop around a little bit here. here. Um, I'm going to skip to a little bit later in the trade as you can see, we consolidated at this uh, high here, and then eventually we broke out. So, um, so as we were breaking out, we were reaching 52. Um, uh, I do see some, I don't know if I skipped it, some buying on the level two. So we, we do see a consistent buy on the low two as we breach that consolidation range. There are a few large orders in there. I'm not, I don't know if I can uh, catch those in time. But um, so we, 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 we touch past 52 and then a little bit later on, so we, can, we, we come back down, which is kind of 
the same theme in this trend. We we go up and pull back, go up and pull back. It's not a super clean uptrend. Exactly what you want. This is the right. environment you want, right? You sell right. into strength, you buy weakness. Sell into strength, buy weakness. Sell into strength, buy weakness. Right, exactly. Um, and this is also kind of some uh, some theme left over from the previous very strong downtrend that came mm -hmm. uh, into the day. So sellers are clearly still present in the in this um, in this name uh, this day. So we we pull back two fifty, and then um, uh, buyers continue to uh, defend this level. So we, we consolidate for quite a while um, in this area. I'm going to skip ahead approximately one hour. We eventually breach back above and I get long here. Here we do see some selling pressure at this level, which makes sense. These two stuff candles indicate selling pressure and there are still sellers at this level. So what I want to see at this point in the trade with a long mindset, I want to see these sellers get taken out with a strong move upwards indicating that buying buying pressure is still outweighs the selling pressure. Mm -hmm. So they get taken out. So I think one thing, and then you see more sellers like step right in, right? Right. Yeah. So there is constant selling pressure in this stock, but the reason why price went up is that the buying pressure um, uh, clearly outweighed it. And also the decreasing volume indicated to me that buyers were getting a little bit slower then uh, mm -hmm. in the beginning of the day. Uh, so I was proceeding at this point with a, a lot of caution um, yeah. because the trend could reverse on me at any, at any time. Yeah, and like, I think, I think you've identified some really important things in the tape. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure to get you that reading the tape um, course because I think that there, what I worry about is within this reading the tape is you're, you're clearly making good trades here. I think that there are a couple little things that you can do to improve um, what you're doing. And I think a part of that just comes from your, your reading the tape skill. And, and, you know, one thing that we talk a lot about on the desk is not overvaluing noise. Right. And I'm, I'm a little concerned that you're, you're clearly getting this stuff. You're clearly putting together a really good narrative and your stock selection was very good. And the way that you're trading the stock is the right way to trade the stock where you're scalping around on a stock with a ton of range and a ton of volatility and your, your thought process is dead on. I think there, there are little things that you can clean up, which will probably happen naturally over time, but sure. um, I'd like to help you do that of, you know, not overvaluing, um, you know, like, like, you know, a thousand, a thousand, uh, if you see, you know, 2000 on the offer, that's not really a lot in a stock that trades, would it trade 1.6 million or something like that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm sorry, six, like uh, like 160 million. So, daily like, average 16 million. Yeah, 16 million. Okay, cool. Yeah. So 16 million average. So, and you said it traded like 1.6 arvol. Uh, yeah, it, it wasn't that significant, but it was enough to. Yeah, but you know, I mean, basically, it's trading 24 million shares, and we need to make sure we're we're thinking about in that moment, you know if we're overvaluing or undervaluing the sizes that we're seeing on the tape, right? I understand. Yeah, that makes you sense. Know, you know what I'm saying? And But I think that you're using, what's so cool about this to me is you're using the information you're seeing in the right way. I think we just, we really want to make sure that we're, we're working with you to make sure you're seeing the right information and, and making good decisions because it, you clearly made some really good trading decisions here. But it's like, if it goes up to 52 and you're like, you know, maybe you lighten up there and you're, you're getting to the right thought process, which is awesome mm -hmm. because it's really difficult to get to that right thought process. A lot of times people are worried or thinking, oh, maybe this stock will go, you know, ballistic or, yeah. you know, they're hoping for something to happen that really isn't there. And you clearly recognize that that wasn't there. You clearly recognize this is a stock that I should scalp around it. Right. Which is awesome. And then you're just using your, your skills there. You know, I think the, the thing moving forward is us making sure we're helping you develop those skills in a way right. that, you know, you can see that that 2000 share offer and recognize kind of, hey, maybe this isn't that that relevant at that mm -hmm. price. Sure. You know, maybe yeah, there's a high probability that that gets lifted pretty quickly. So right. I'm really happy that you're doing this tape work. But I think for me personally, I recognize that that we can do a better job of helping you structure 
your, your tape reading skills. So, um, because I, I see, I certainly see some greatness in what you're doing, which is really exciting. Um, I just Thank think you. it's a little rough around the edges. So, yeah. So one last point in this, uh, tape reading that I, I want to, um, show, which I do think yeah. is, is significant and not noise. So right here, we breach through 52 and reach um, 53. Yeah, so we see this constant selling pressure. This is yeah, definitely across significant. Multiple, yeah, across multiple exchanges, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> so super, um, that is super interesting. You're right, that is something yeah. to value. Yeah. Is when we're extended up into a level, right? Because you've come basically from 50 and then you accelerated from 51 to 53. And right. then you see a lot of size across multiple mm -hmm. exchanges. What do you what do you think in there? That shows me that um, it was not just one person trying to push price down. It's many different um, uh, people across different exchanges um, trying to push push price down, which shows that there is some sort of um, bearish uh, sentiment growing against this trend, and mm -hmm. that the trend could reverse at any point in time. Yep. So then. One last point, four minutes later. So we see that um, price rejected quite strongly off that level and those 40, 40, 40, 40 sellers, it, it, is, it is clear that they were taken out. Um, yeah. So price rejected hard. And then, yeah. um, and then we still see a little bit of uh, more selling pressure against the yeah. stock. And this is where I, uh, I stopped trading in this name. And what you saw was a good reason to exit. It's also a reason that you could flip short. Right. In that extended move, if you're truly taking scalps. Yeah. So if I was, if I was riding this stock as a, sort of like a momentum name, getting in with larger size initially, taking fewer exits, um, this short trade would be like a different trade, um, which I would have to build out in my playbook. But since this was a scalping trade that I took, I that that is true. I did have the opportunity to scalp at this point, but uh, I didn't. But it's definitely something but that you, I'll. But, I mean, you did the first thing right, which is make sure when you have a reason to sell, you sell. Right. And that's exactly what you did. You had a reason yeah. to sell. You saw the sellers across multiple exchanges into a key level after an extended move. That's a really good reason to sell. Basically, yeah. Team. Right. And you did a really good job of that. So I think that's something you should be really comfortable with in your, yeah. in your trading and, and really happy with actually. So here's a little bit of technology that I used during this trade and beforehand. On the bottom here, we see a cloud quant script um, that just showed me the percent change of the top gainers and losers uh, throughout the day and in the pre-market. So I go through this and I check um, for any, any symbols that, that stand out to me in particular um, very overextended from their range. And I look to take a trade um, on, on those names, especially if they have a good news catalyst, which is very important for my trading. Which is perfect for, yeah, if you're, if you, if you're looking for range and liquidity, this is the sort of scan you want to have. That's awesome. Right. And this top um, script here, which um, this script I wrote that basically helps me size my trades. Yeah. So, it first asks you, what's your max daily stop? So you put in your max daily stop. And then for each trade, it asks you what percentage of your daily stop do you want to risk on the trade? So as an example here, I have 20%. And then it asks you your entry price. You put in a, a, a sample um, entry price. You, and then you ask for your stop. You put in your stop. And then it tells you how many shares you should go in with. And that um, even if the trade goes completely um, not your way and you get stopped out, um, it ensures that you have only lost the, your defined amount of risk that you say here and um, nothing more. So yeah. I wrote this because I, had, I found that I had a little bit of a hard time trying to choose how many shares I should go in with the trade. And this helps me tremendously, so. It's, and it's really good to set, you can even set the context of that. You know, you could, you could expand that to, as you're looking at a stock, you could have it, and I know you, you probably know exactly how to do this as I'm mentioning it, but you could have it spit out variables for A setup, B setup, C setup. 
right? right? If you're risking 30% in an A setup, how many shares should I allocate based on, you know, a rough valuation? And that's something we talk about a lot. You know, we're trading these airlines today. AAL is a $12 stock. DAL is a $29 stock. RCL is a $36 stock. Right. You know, you have to risk basically three, four times as much size-wise. You have to size so much more aggressively in AAL if you, than DAL, right? If you sized the same in, in those three different stocks, you're going to be over-risking in some and under-risking in others. Exactly. So using things like this are, are such huge sources of edge over a long term in your trading. Right. And that's an interesting point that you brought up where um, I have it have automatically 20%, 15%, 30% um, risk levels. And that's definitely something I'll look into uh, implementing in this because that seems pretty important to have. Yeah. And as you're certainly as your as your trading evolves, your playbook will evolve and you'll right. get some different looks on it too. So. Yeah. So here is the um, my actual executions for this trade. As you can see, it was clearly a scalp. Um, I got in here right above, right below 49, uh, and I yeah, scaled out and I added a little bit above for, uh, 49, and I scaled out more and I added a little bit more, a little bit more here and I scaled out more and more. So this was an exercise in scalping. This definitely wasn't a trade where you just get in with one size and you have a hard stop and you sell half and then just sell the rest. This was clearly a scalping trade. Um, and so it should be, um, I, I think I should criticize it as a scalping trade. I shouldn't try to, um, make it like a momentum long. For this stock and the trade that you took, it's really good that you classified it as a, as a scalping trade because certain stocks are better scalping stocks than other stocks. Right. And if you're going through your filters every day, if you're looking at it, you'll understand the ones that are. Right. And, you know, I talk with a lot of people every, every week and, you know, it's so interesting because some people will say, well, I'm a scalper. I trade Tesla. I scalp Tesla every day. Well, there are some days Tesla is a good scalping stock and there are other days that it's not, you right. know, there are some days that um, the Chinese names, Baba, for instance, for example, is a good stuff scalping stock. And there are other days that it's not. Um, right. There are days when the markets are, are good scalping markets and, and they're not. And what defines a really good scalping trade for the most part is as long as you have range and as long as you have liquidity, um, you're, you're going to be able to scalp it. And you've identified a really good opportunity where this stock is trading, you know, basically 10% moves, you know, like basic 46 to 51 is a 10% move a little more than 10%. And then it's trading, you know, four or 5% up and down every right. couple of minutes. Yeah, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's very volatile. So that's yep. why I chose to scalp this trade. Yep. But, and if you're trying to hold through that entire trade, it's going right. to be fun. Um, one minor criticism that I would make um, for this trade was, um, I was a little bit my, my exits were a little bit um, not as organized as I would like to have had them. Even as a scalping trade, I feel that I could have improved my exits by, um, but well, as I practice and as I learn to read the tape a lot better and know what to filter out from noise and what to look for with um, si um, significant size, I think I will be a little bit better at honing my exits um, as a scalper, uh, as a scalping trade. So um, that's something that I would like, I would have liked to improve on. And another thing was I entered a little bit high initially. So my plan was to enter at right above 48 and I entered quite, quite a lot higher than 48. This may have been um, um, uh, because price moved very fast. So I may have to put in a limit order, uh, throw a bid and just, um, uh, get in the trade that way or um, or adjust my plan accordingly so getting in a little bit too high above 48 did a, did a skew my risk to reward a little bit but um, it's something that, that I would like to improve in the future uh, which would be getting in right when um, 
right when my entry signals trigger. So to do this, I must have the right amount of patience and discipline when following my plan. So I'm also trying to improve how I um, follow my plan, how well I follow my plan, and how I, um, how I am able to adjust my plan accordingly if the stock doesn't trade exactly how I anticipated it to. So these are a few things that I'm trying to improve on and I look forward to taking another trade um, like this in the future. I think you did really good. I think that there's a lot that you can learn from this. Um, but I, I'd like to go through the scorecard with you. If there's sure. Else. Okay, cool. Um, stock selection. I think you got a 10 out of 10. I, I really thought that that was the right stock for, for what the trade that you were making. Uh, big picture, 10 out of 10. I think you, you laid out particularly paying attention to not just what, um, what, what the market was doing, but what Bitcoin had done also. Um, you know, in a scalping trade that matters a little less because you're not necessarily trading it for position. But what you did was showcase that this, this stock has, has come a long way. And, and, you know, you've showcased the volatility that's present in, in that market and in, in, in the coin market um, in general. And so that I think was really good. So I thought that was awesome. Uh, trade strategy, you know, I think for a scalp, uh, you really hit the points that you needed to hit. So I, I think that was really good. Um, uh, intraday fundamentals, I thought you did a very good job of that. And in particular, you know, with the focus being on, on the scalps, you identified the stock that was moving and the way that it, it and the fact that it was moving in a really good way. Um, technical analysis, I think I'm going to give you an eight out of 10. I think on the higher time frame you did well. I think on the lower time frame, um, you know, a couple of things that, that scalpers do um, is they're really focused on like, you know, not just the levels, but the price action as it's occurring and how the price action really for a scalper, the price action determines the levels much more than the hard levels themselves. And I so see. I think that, that that's one thing that's kind of interesting is although the levels are clear looking back, um, I bet you if you watch the tape and just focus on like every time it tries to push down and can't, um, you know, where the bidder's coming in and every time it tries to break out and can't, it's probably a little, a little bit more loose than the levels that you think. Okay. Um, and those are important little factors that if you're just watching the tape, you'll just get better at, you know, if you mm -hmm. just do your, your tape work, you're just going to get better at it, which is exciting. Um, so eight out of 10 on that reading the tape. Um, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to give you an eight out of 10. I think you were in the right place, but even just going through those examples, I was noticing little things that just like we talked about, it's like, it goes up, you know, it fails at, at uh, what was one of the examples of oh, the 48 and then, or the 50. And then you were like, and then it rebid and held. That was a perfect example of what you look for, for the long. But then at the 51, you know, it kind of failed there. And we were talking about kind of how, how it looks on the pullback and stuff like that. I think there are little things that, that you can do to improve um, with the reading the tape. And I think you're, like I said, I think your head's really in the right place. And I think you're setting the stage the right way. Um, I think it's just training yourself to think through um, the way the price is moving and what that might mean. Mm -hmm. And that, that'll that show up on the tape. And you and I can work on that because I think that'll be something that doing this playbook together, I think it's something that if, if we can help you do a better job at anything, it would be that. Okay. Um, and I think that's a huge room for improvement because you're showing you have the capacity for that and the speed on your keys to execute that, which is really mm -hmm. exciting. Um, trade management. Yeah. I think eight out of 10, you know, I think that you, you did a good job of just scalping to scalp. Um, and, and that's a good thing. I think the best thing you did honestly was, um, you know, not trying position trade it. And, and so with the trade management, it's a series of decisions that you're making. So I think eight out of 10 is, is really good for that. Um, and I think that, that we can help you get better because again, coming back to the, the tape, like, you know, with scalping, very rarely do I think it's buying above a level or on a breakout. Um, your best risk reward is actually going the other way. So when you, if that makes sense. So when it mm -hmm. dips down, you want to be buying and yeah, you want to be, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 And so it's a weird thing and you have to get, you, you kind of have to train yourself to do it. 
-hmm. but certainly with scalping, you know, your goal is to make, put yourself in the best position possible as many times in that trade as you possibly can. And so again, that's something we can work on, which is really exciting. Um, technology, 10 out of 10. I really like the fact that you're doing the three different ways of finding the right stock, um, calculating the right risk. Um, that's, that's something that, you know, even if you're just like, I'm going to scalp this all day, understanding your share sizing and what it needs to be, even for scalps, uh, can help save you a lot of frustration. Yeah. Uh, for example, you know, if you would have traded coin with, say, the size that you would trade, you know, the coin with the volatility that it had, it's really easy to oversize or undersize trades, um, you know, but like having that little check, I think using technology in your favor is really good. Um, review, I thought you were very, very good um, overall. So, uh, you know, I'll give you an eight out of 10 on that. And then diligence, I thought 10 out of 10. So, um, you know, I mean, I'm scoring this a 92 overall. I think it was really solid. Um, I'll, I'll send you my notes on it and okay. you know, kind of you and I can put together a plan uh, on, on what to do moving forward. Um, knowing what we now know about this style of trading and the trades that you're taking. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they are producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comment section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video from all of us at SMB. Train and trade well.